I don't have to tell anybody that we are living in not only unprecedented times, but times that are, I think, driving people nuts. Uh, we're looking at a series, not one, not two, not three, but four, five crises simultaneously in a way that we have never seen before. So what are we looking at? Number one, obviously, we are looking at a pandemic which has now taken 150,000 lives uh, and which, because of the gross irresponsibility and stupidity of this president who downplayed this virus from day one, who turned his back on science, that as a result of his desire to open up the economy as quickly as he could, what we're seeing is a surge in the uh, pandemic in state after state after state. So you got a pandemic which is running wild throughout this country. Number two, you have simultaneously an economic meltdown, the likes of which we have not seen since the Great Depression. What we're talking about are tens of millions of people who have lost their jobs. And in this country, when you lose your job, in many cases, you lose your health insurance. And people who have no money are unable to put food on the table. So we're looking at kids facing hunger. We're looking at families being evicted from their apartments, people not being able to pay their credit card bills. So you got that whole economic collapse. And then on top of that, we're looking at the existential threat to our planet of climate change. And some of you may have noticed just a few weeks ago in Siberia, one of the coldest regions on Earth, the temperature was 100 degrees. 100 degrees in Siberia, complete record-breaking temperature. And all over the world, we're seeing uh, polar ice melting. We're seeing the oceans becoming more acidified. We're seeing rising sea levels, and that is what's taking place. And then on top of all of that, we're seeing the largest series of rallies and demonstrations in the modern history of this country. People who are standing up and fighting against systemic racism and police brutality. And then added to all of that is a president who is not only turning his backs on working people, not only a pathological liar and a racist and a sexist and a homophobe and a xenophobe, but maybe even more importantly, this is a guy who does not believe in democracy. And as we speak, he is sending his own personal army into city after city in order to arrest protesters and demonstrators. And this is a president who has said, well, you know, if I lose the election, I may not quite be prepared to leave office because, you know, I'm not sure that the election results will be quite accurate. So you got a president who in an ahistorical way, never happened before, does not really believe in the rule of law, does not believe in democracy. So what does that mean? Where does that take us? It takes us to the fact that in about 100 days, there's going to be an election which will be the most important election in American history. And this is not just an election about health care or education or climate change. This is an election about whether or not we maintain our democratic form of government. That's what this election is about. So in the next 100 days, we have got to do everything that we can in terms of reaching out to our friends, family, fellow workers, fellow students, to make sure that we have the highest voter turnout in the history of this country and that we defeat Trump. But we've got to do more than that. We've got to elect progressive candidates to the Congress, to the state legislature, to uh, district attorneys and prosecutor offices. And I've got to say, we in the progressive movement have had some pretty good results in the last several months. We've uh, had really strong progressives from Congress on down uh, winning their primaries and everything being equal, many of them are going to win their general elections. And then not only do we have to bring our people together to defeat Trump, not only do we have to elect progressives through federal, state, and local positions, but we have got to also maintain 
our vision. Because in the midst of campaign and dealing with the media and everything else, we can forget what we are fighting for and what kind of country we want to become. And that means that we want an economy that works for all, not just the few. We want to end starvation wages in America and the reality that half of our people are living paycheck to paycheck. We want to end a corrupt political system in which billionaires and super PACs can control to a very significant degree what goes on politically. We want to join the rest of the industrialized world and guarantee health care to all people as a human right. And if there was ever a moment when the American people understand how dysfunctional, how cruel the current health care system is, this is that moment. Because unlike other countries in America, for many workers, health care is a job benefit, not a human right. You lose your job, you lose your health care. And that's the case for millions and millions of workers right now. And that is why we have got to continue the fight for a Medicare for all single payer program. And we have got to make sure that in America, all of our people, regardless of income, get the quality education that they need. That means making public colleges and universities tuition free, and it means canceling all student debt. That younger generation, which is struggling economically right now, cannot handle the kind of student debt which they have been forced to assume. And it means, as we're seeing in the streets right now, the fight to end systemic racism in this country, the American people increasingly, increasingly are sick and tired of institutional racism in all forms of our society, economically, socially, in healthcare and education. They're tired of it. And they want to be rid of systemic racism in this country. And they want to be rid of police brutality and police murders. And the American people also understand that the time is long overdue for serious and real immigration reform and a path towards citizenship for the undocumented. So I say all of that, that in the midst of the struggles that we are engaged in, the need to defeat Trump, the need to elect Biden, the need to elect progressive candidates at the federal, state, and local level, we cannot lose sight of our vision for a new America. So within the next week, I will tell you that I will be fighting as hard as I can right now on what is called the COVID-5 legislation being debated in the Congress. And clearly, the Republican proposal uh, that was announced today by uh, Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is totally, totally, totally inadequate. We're not going to cut uh, by two-thirds the uh, unemployment benefits uh, that our workers receive. Uh, we are not going to not fund nutrition programs. We're not going to not put money into elections. We are going to put money into hazard pay. We are going to put money into nutrition. We are going to save the United States Postal Service. And in my view, we should move to making sure that every person in this country gets a $2,000 check per month during this crisis, as well as health care during the crisis as a human right. So let me conclude by just saying there is a whole lot of stuff that's going on. I mean, and if you feel a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit bewildered, uh, you're not alone. Uh, we are all kind of reeling by the kind of crises that we're facing, by the irresponsibility of this president, and by the need to stay focused. Bottom line is that the next 100 days may well be the most important 100 days in the history of our country. There is an enormous work amount of work that has to be done. Let's stay focused. Let's do it. Let's defeat Trump. And let us move this country in a very new and different direction. Thank you all very much.